Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen, amen. Why don't we stand? We're going to prepare to go into a time of worship and singing. Very excited about today. What a great, great day. Every day the Lord gives us is a good day. Amen. <laughs> praise God, praise God. Well, again, welcome. We appreciate you being here today. We're going to pray and invite the presence of the Lord to join us and uh, praying the blessings of the Lord to minister today. And uh, tis the season, but the reason for the season is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to share just a couple of Christmas songs. Um, I know that our last Sunday of the year, we will be virtual. And uh, we've only got a couple of Sundays uh, here in person of the remaining of the year, uh, really before Christmas. So we, we wanted to insert just a, a couple of Christmas carols. But we're going to pray today. I know a few more will be coming in and uh, inviting the presence of the Lord to be with us today. I'm so thankful that God is, is moving and ministering and blessing many people's lives I know it's a season, as I've mentioned before, can bring back a lot of challenging memories as well. Uh, but God is still God, and He is still in control. Amen. Would you join me as our team prepares? Uh, let's pray, and let's welcome the presence of the Lord with us today on this Lord's Day. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the privilege and honor to be able to assemble and gather. Lord, I thank you, God, for our families that are here and those that will be joining us here shortly. We thank you for those that are Facebook Live with us today in our, our virtual congregation. Lord, I pray for those that are watching today. I pray for this service today. Lord, we thank you that you came into this world and made a way whereby we could be saved and redeemed. Lord, bless this service today and, and bless our time of singing in the ministry of the word of the Lord. And we give you all the praise and all of the honor and all of the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This time of year, we kind of, we, we focus on the birth of Jesus Christ and all of the events that happened in his birth and around his birth. Like the angel choir telling the shepherds to, to go see the manger and adore the Lord Jesus, the baby Jesus. And we gather every Sunday morning at 1030 and we adore him and we worship him and we magnify the Lord Jesus Christ in many various ways. But this morning and, and in, in December, we're going to concentrate on coming and adoring the Lord Jesus Christ and his birth. Amen. Aren't you glad he came? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us. Lord, we come to worship and adore your name, Jesus. Christ the Lord.
magnify him can you just lift him up lord we adore you lord we are so thankful for christmas we are so thankful for your birth lord jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus we worship you father we bless your holy name hallelujah and because of the birth of a baby he brought joy he brought peace hallelujah that you and i can have this morning amen hallelujah we're going to sing joy to the world Oh, joy to the world. sounded so good. Would you give him one more round of praise and applause into the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to just 
say, of course, this time of the year, just want to again wish you a very Merry Christmas uh, as it is quickly, quickly approaching. Amen. I hope you've got your shopping done. And online packages have arrived and, and all of that. Amen. Anybody not started? Okay, there's a few of you. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's all right. Amen. We appreciate your giving, of course. Uh, thank you so much. You have been so kind during this season to uh, be faithful as much as possible in your tithing and offerings. A couple of things I want to mention. Of course, you, uh, as we mention each week um, when you're in person, you can, of course, uh, do that with our giving envelope. And there is the lockbox there in the, the lobby as we've kind of had to shift during the season, as you know. And then, of course, you can give online. I want to mention two things. Today is Missions Sunday. And, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful. You know, church, that I have a, a burden and a heart for missions. And uh, I, I'm so thankful that this congregation, this church, is supporting 12 missionaries. Isn't that incredible? Thank the Lord for that. And I, I'm just believing we're going to keep increasing in that giving. So thank the Lord for that today being Mission Sunday. We appreciate you remembering your missions pledge and you can give online. Also, uh, there has been an extension given to our Christmas for Christ. Uh, this tree here, each one, as you know, each one of these represents a dollar amount. And I'm so thankful uh, over the past few weeks, the ones that have been taken and we have received back we have now raised just a little over a thousand dollars to go to Christmas for Christ. So thank you for that. Um, I do want to let you know we have been able to extend the deadline. Uh, we found out they're going to extend it. So uh, our final day to be able to receive these, if you decide you want to participate, each one has a dollar amount and you can put that in there and drop it in the box there in the lobby. Uh, but that goes to help church planners, and that uh, the last Sunday will be January the 3rd, which is our first Sunday in January 2021. That is if the rapture hadn't taken place. Amen. The way things are looking, you just don't know, right? You got to stay rapture ready <laughs> for the coming of the Lord. A couple of quick things, and then we're just going to transition um, I, I do want to remind you, be in prayer for Jill Eiskin that lost her husband here recently. Uh, tomorrow, if you receive our email newsletter online, I'm going to attach the obituary to that. They're still trying to make arrangements what they're going to do uh, there. So um, you, can, you can look at that email. Uh, don't forget, Bible study is online right now during this time on Thursday nights. We wrapped up our Armor of God series that we did this Thursday night. I, I hope you'll join us. I'm going to be talking about in this Bible study about when God messes up your plans. When God messes up your plans. And uh, we'll share that Thursday night. Last thing I want to mention is don't forget our Christmas Eve service this year. Uh, we always try to do a little Christmas Eve service. And uh, this year it will be online, virtual. I am going to have to pre-do pre that particular uh, service. As you know, I'm going to go be with my mother. I uh, lost my father here just a couple of months ago. And our first Christmas without my dad, I, I felt like we needed to be there. I was, I was telling Debbie, you know, we've got the only granddaughters. And so uh, my other two sisters have all boys. And uh, my mother, boy, she sure is missing these girls. I don't know about her son, but she's missing those granddaughters. So we're going to make our way down south to Texas and uh, be able to spend a little time with my mother. Praise the Lord. Why don't you stand? Amen. I, I want to say um, we, are, we are deeply honored to have uh, Tim and Adina Pedigo, and um, we're very, very blessed. They're going to be doing a special Christmas concert tonight at our main campus in Mequon. You are welcome if you'd like to join there at 6 o'clock. And I am so grateful that they were, they were willing to come here to a smaller farming community. They've been on many, many national platforms. And, uh, but I, I appreciate their love for the kingdom and their willingness to do whatever God assigns them to do. 
So, Brother Pedigo, God bless you, sir. We're honored that you're here. Sister Pedigo, God bless you. And their children that are here with them. Amen. Give them a hand, a welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Come on, let's praise the Lord. How about that? Give the Lord a big hand. Amen. It is so good to be here today with you. Hallelujah. God is so good. We are blessed to be here. You can be seated. Uh, I'll just tell you, this is, uh, this is one more for the books, Pastor. Uh, a few weeks ago, my wife and I, now my kids are not with us now. They, they are both ministering in churches in Connecticut, so this is a special thing for us to have them with us. Uh, but we were ministering in Nineveh a few weeks ago, and last weekend we were in Paris, and now we're in Belgium. This is awesome. We are world travelers and haven't even left the States yet, so this is great. No, we're honored to be here with you today. It's a joy to be here, and the Lord is so good. We just count it a great blessing to be here, always to be in the presence of God and with God's people. And so we're thrilled to be here. We're going to sing a couple of songs maybe and, and share a little Christmas spirit. Is that all right? All right. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Come and remember the manger and the promise that is born today. Won't you look in the eyes of a baby boy? And the song he heard the angels sing is still echoing, release the sounding joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy, let your heart prepare him room. Joy, we receive our King, let heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing. Stop in the hurry of Christmas and listen to the angels call. Stand in the quiet and hear his voice. Oh, with your heart, hold on to Jesus and the song that warm the winter's night. And the song that warm the winter's night still changes life. Repeat, Repeat the sounding joy, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy, let your heart prepare him room. Joy, we receive our key. Let heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. The glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. All of earth and heaven sing joy to the world, joy to the world, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy to the world, joy to the world, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy, let your heart prepare him room. Joy, we receive our King, let heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy. Let your heart prepare him room. Joy, 
we receive our King. Let heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing. for the Christmas season. I love fall. That's my favorite season. Yeah. You know, I love the colors. I love the smells. I like the fireplaces going and all that. But nothing replaces the season of our Savior right. because yeah. of what it means to our lives. It's not just about gifts, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, but it's about what he did for us, what he did to make a way for us. Yeah. And we're just trying to call attention to the fact that there was a baby. Yes, there was. Yeah. But it was more than just a baby as a gift. It was a gift that just keeps on giving every year, changing our lives. And so we're going to sing one more song about him. Isaiah said it right. Uh, he said there is going to be a baby born, and he's going to be a special one. And uh, his name is very special as well. Come see the baby crib for a bed. His mother Mary lay down his sweet head. The starlight was shining, the wise men were led. Come see the baby and worship him. His name is Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel, the Holy One, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Come and adore Him, on oh, then lead me. Someone like me What could I offer? What could I bring? Come and allure him King of kings His name is Wonderful Counselor The Mighty God Prince of Peace Everlasting Father Emmanuel Holy One, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And the greatest of His reign will never end. Let there be peace on earth. And all good will to men. King of kings, worship him. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, everlasting father. Emmanuel, he is the holy one, son of God, savior of the world. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel, Holy One, Son of God, Savior of the Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him right now. Oh, come on, let's worship him right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. There is no one like him. 
Hallelujah. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it is such a privilege and an honor to know the Lord. It's such a privilege and an honor to be here with you. I say it again today. I just want to, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to Pastor Hanthorne for calling us and, uh, and inviting us to Mequon. And who would have thought that Mequon would lead us to Belgium? But we're here, and we're so happy to be here. Thank you, Pastor Harris. Amen. It's so honored to, to we're so honored to be here. That's right. And you know what? We were uh, we were having dinner with uh, Pastor Hanthorn last night, and he was kind of telling us about your work here and and what uh, a little bit about it and what was going on. And I have to tell you, folks, we're talking about miracles. We're talking about the miracle of the birth of Christ. Without that miracle, this miracle wouldn't have happened. I'm so excited for the miracle of Belgium and what's happening here at Christian Life Church. You ought to be out of your mind. You ought to be out of your mind at what God is doing, and you ought to be out of your mind that God has placed such great leadership over you, and you ought to be thankful for your pastor and his wife. It's an awesome thing. It's an awesome thing, uh, and so we are so grateful to be here. Thank you again, Pastor Harris. And uh, to everyone who's been so kind, uh, I, I want to say, first of all, Stuart, thank you for your help. We always want to thank the sound man because he can just turn me off, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a great job to have uh, sometimes. If it goes well, it's great. If it doesn't, everybody turns around and looks and kind of points. So I want to thank you for your help. Amen. And then also, uh, certainly, I want to thank Christina. We got to the hotel yesterday. And uh, uh, we were checking in. The lady says, oh, I have something for you. I said, okay. I was expecting maybe a, a bag or a, a basket or something. And the lady came out. She said, man, you must be somebody special. And I said, well, if I weren't, I feel pretty special right now. Uh, you have a cart or something? We can bring this up to the room. So thank you very much. That was very kind of you. I do want to talk to you today, um, we call it preach, teach, talk, whatever it might be today. Um, Christmas season is special. It's for so many reasons. It is just so special. And I think over time, um, it, it's hard because, you know, I, I like seasons. Now, I, we were just talking, Pastor, beforehand. I, I grew up in Texas just like you did, you know. And so I come from where you have this beautiful summer excuse me, this beautiful blazing summer, and then one day you wake up and everything that was green is just on the ground. So me coming to the Midwest, wow, I drive people crazy. Every year, you know, come September, I would start in on people, the congregation, now pick your tree. You pick your tree because God is about to paint something you can't even imagine. The colors, and people would go, oh, he's lost his mind again. But the beauty of the colors of what God does in the seasons, you know, and all of that. So I love the seasons. I love all of that. But you know what? I'm conflicted lately because what used to be summer and what used to be fall and the colors and the transitions and everything, it's all kind of like Texas now. There's no in-between. You just go from hot, blazing summer in August and September 1st, Christmas decorations are everywhere. You walk into Costco and they've already got trees up and all that business. September 1st, that's not right. We still have fall to go through. We, you know, we got Thanksgiving. We got all these other things to do. The world's confused, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I read this some time back, and uh, I think it's very pertinent. It's a, it's a quote, and it's uh, from Meredith the Land. It was in Harper's Bazaar. It said, 25 years ago, Christmas was not the burden that it is now. There was less haggling and weighing and less quid pro quo and less fatigue of body, less wearing of the soul, and most of all, there was less loading up with trash. Well, that might sound applicable today, but the thing that caught my attention was this is not a modern quote. This quote came from 1904. So over 100 years ago, they were still struggling with this thing with Christmas. What do we do with Christmas? So what I want to talk to you today about is the great exchange, the great exchange and what happens with all of this uh, thing called gift giving and this great gift that we have. And 
And this is not an argument for no longer giving gifts. I, I'm not against giving gifts. I think that's awesome. That's great to, to transfer gifts and to lavish a little uh, uh, presence on each other and all that. It's all good. I don't have a problem with that. I think gift giving is great. However, I do think that there is some merit in rethinking how we give. Uh, Pastor, thank you for what you're doing here. See, it's important that what we do for our family, we also do for the family of God. I think it's a very powerful thing. We were talking last night about uh, how missions giving blesses the church, and I think the church is extremely powerfully blessed when you give to missions. Whether it be home missions, whether it be foreign missions, when you give of what you have to make sure somebody else can experience what you've already experienced, I believe God blesses that. So maybe that's a part of this miracle. See, maybe that's a part of this miracle. How we give is important, and what we give is important. What we give is important, and better yet, why we give is important. For our 2020 industry experts, uh, expect the average American to spend just over $1,000 per person on holiday gifts. One trillion dollars. One trillion dollars on, on a person. In the last five years, the average family budget uh, has risen 58% for Christmas. Wow. Staggering, isn't it? 58% across the board of people giving more and more and more and more. And to what end? The consumer statistics report these. I'll just shoot these statistics at you. You know, a lot of times people are like, oh, we don't need all the stats. But, but let me just do this to set it up, what, what I'm trying to talk about. Consumer statistics, 28% of shoppers are entering the holiday season still paying off debt from last year's Christmas. Is that crazy? Now we're back to the how we give, what we give, and why we give. Is that crazy? 28%. Over 50% of the holiday shoppers either overspend their holiday budget or do not even set one at all. Consumers who went into debt over the holiday season racked up an average of $1,054 last year. Just stats. Just throwing them out here. So when we talk about that, let's get to the important thing. 53.1% of the people report receiving unwanted gifts for Christmas. We spend all this money, and it's just kind of uh, something we do. To what end? To what end? We're giving things that people don't even want. Some report that 18% of the gifts are never used by the person that received them. 4% are immediately just thrown in the trash. Why are we doing what we're doing? Gift giving is so embedded in the Christmas story. It's, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with giving. But we need to rethink it. Why we do it. How we do it. What we're really doing when we give a gift, so it's an important thing. We give and exchange gifts with family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, and we even give a gift to people we don't particularly like sometimes. It's just what we do. We're at the office, and we give a gift because it's expected to give a gift. We go to someone's house, and we bring a gift because it's expected to take a gift. And, and so the, the high, whys and the hows and what we do, again, there's nothing wrong with gift giving. It's an important thing. It's almost uh, embedded in our culture. We can't get away from it. In this season, though, uh, we typically speak of the greatest gift being Jesus Christ, wouldn't you say? And that's what we were singing about today. His name is Wonderful Counselor, right? Savior of the world. That's really what we're talking about is the greatest gift there ever was and how we assess that and how we move forward. So that's an accurate assessment that we are in the season of our Savior. We are in the season of our Savior. We ought to be thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ in this time. Not so much each other. It's okay to think about each other, but we really ought to be thinking about why we're here, how we got here, and the blessings the Lord has bestowed upon us that brought us to this point. I have to tell you, I have to tell you, I am so blessed to have been raised in an apostolic home. My earliest, uh, my earliest memories were asleep either on a pew or under a pew on a, on a blanket. My mom directing the choir, you know, my dad doing something, you know, Sunday school superintendent, this and that. Falling asleep on the pew, carry me out, put me in the car, take me home, that kind of deal. That's my earliest memories. I'm so grateful to know that I've been raised in an apostolic home, to know the Savior the way I do. Did anybody feel that way today? To know the Lord Jesus Christ in a very personal way? It's a very important thing, but it didn't come uh, without somebody sacrificing, and of course, without the Lord Jesus Christ sacrificing 
so we could be here. And so it's a very powerful thing. In this season, it's very important to understand where we came from. Without the birth of Christ, there would have been no redemption for fallen man. Without this baby, without this manger, we wouldn't be here today in the way we are. Salvation uh, would still be through a, a yearly sacrifice of a lamb, but the sin wouldn't be gone, nor the feelings and the guilt of sin wouldn't be gone. It would just be rolled back a year. Now just think of the weight that those people carried year to year, knowing that it was just rolled back a little bit. But thank God, thank God he robed himself in flesh and came to this earth to sacrifice for you and I so that we could know that when our sins are forgiven, they're rolled away. The Bible says, as an ink blot is washed away, so are your sins. Never to be remembered again, as if they never were. That's the miracle of this gift. How powerful is that? We would have no hope of heaven. This gift would change everything. But it would take some cooperation. It would take some other people giving. Let's think about some of these people. Mary's gift. What was Mary's gift? Mary's gift was being willing to receive a call from an angel. Now, just imagine, just put yourself in her place just for a moment. You're just asleep, and an angel shows up and gives you this wild story. Really? I think she kind of said that in some sort of way. Seriously? But yeah, she heard the angel, and she accepted that. Now, in our rational minds today, how could we receive that? How could we see that as something possible? And yet she said, so be it unto me. If that's your will, Lord, so be it unto me. So Mary was very important. But, okay, let's think about somebody else in the story. Mary, okay, we get that. But Joseph, Joseph's gift was his willingness to stand by Mary who believed the angel. To believe that she was honest and true in what she was doing. He could have put her away. The Bible says that, that he even considered he could have put her away, but he decided not to. He decided to accept Mary even though the story to most of us was unacceptable. He decided to nurture, to raise this child as his own. Thank you, Joseph, for being willing to be a part of this story. The angel's gift, Luke 2 and 13 says, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now, one might say, well, the angels, that was an easy thing. The angels, I mean, hey, they were angels. You know, they were created to praise God, and, and so that was a natural thing. That wasn't really a sacrifice on their part. Well, okay, maybe, but can we not? agreed that one-third of them made a choice to do otherwise. When, the, when Satan, when the enemy came to them and convinced them to leave, one-third of them chose to walk away. No, they had a choice. They could have walked away as well, but they chose to sing praises that God had come to earth. Thank you to the angels. And by the way, this whole thing about salvation that we talk about and this whole idea that Christ came so we could be saved, the Bible says that when one comes to repentance when one person gives their heart to the Lord the angels sing and rejoice just like when Jesus Christ was born on this earth every time a new person comes down and repents of their sins every time a person goes down in the waters of baptism and every time they begin to speak with that heavenly language the angels rejoice they get excited over one and it all started right back here with the birth of this baby thank you to the angels thank you to the angels the wise men what a story the wise men had. We know that it was customary for caravans to go from place to place. We know that it was customary for caravans to take gifts and honor and, and, and obeisance to those that they went to see. That, that, there was nothing out, out of the ordinary with that. They, they were come for dignitaries and bring camel loads of, of gifts and all of those type things. But this was something different. Uh, they brought gifts of their abundance, gold, frankincense, myrrh. This is something nobody else could bring, but they could, and they did. See, they could have brought anything they wanted to do, uh, bring, but they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so one might say the wise men were simply doing what wise men do. But here's the special thing to me. It's not about the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's not why I'm grateful for the wise men. Uh, see, when they came, they went looking for the Savior and asked Herod, how do we find him? And Herod said to them, well, uh, if you'll go find him and come back and tell me, then I'll go and worship him as well. 
I am thankful that the wise men, that when they went and saw the baby, sure, they gave him the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But they were sensitive, and they heard the Spirit of God speak to their hearts saying, don't do this. If you do this, it's going to be bad. I'm thankful that the wise men saw past all the gift giving and all the gifts and all of that other, the frankincense, the gold, the myrrh. It didn't mean anything really uh, to them. It wasn't a big deal. But the voice that they heard was powerful because they're not going back. Save the baby. The sensitivity of wise men was powerful. Thank you to the wise men for being sensitive to the spirit. The shepherds, the shepherds, wow, they came humbly. They had nothing else to give. They came simply kneeling and bowing and worshiping the king of kings. And, you know, uh, and when they had seen it, the star, the Bible says, they made noise abroad. They began to sing praises unto God. Now, this is a powerful thing here. The wise men certainly went away and they had their story. But they didn't do what the shepherds did. The shepherds immediately left that stable and began going through the streets singing praises to God. Singing praises about God. you got to come and see the baby. So their gift was they're, they're spreading the news. Spreading the news. I'm, I'm grateful for, for the shepherds. I'm so thankful for each one that was in the story. Now let's fast forward a couple of millennia. You know, we talk about what we can give and how we can give and what's important to give and what we should do and what we shouldn't do where Christmas is concerned. It becomes kind of a powerful thing. There was a story that was written back in the early 1940s, and I, I had no idea about this. I had heard it all my life, Little Christmas Carol, and uh, I, I got I to gotta be honest, uh, I just didn't even get it. I just didn't get it. Uh, I hear it, and, and, um, and the story didn't make any sense to me. We sing it. We sang it. We still sing it. Uh, okay, but I just don't know how it fits in the story. Well, turns out that it was... Written by Catherine Kennecott Davis, first recorded in 1951 by that famous family on the Austrian hillside, The Sound of Music, The Hills Are Alive, The Trap Family was the first to sing it. And it was called The Little Drummer Boy. I, I never knew the story behind it, but the story was written uh, this way. The song was originally titled Carol of the Drum, and it was music based to a Czech song, and uh, it was sung uh, because of this, in the lyric, the singer simply tells how this young boy is summoned by the Magi uh, to play for Jesus in the manger. He came, and he didn't have a gift for the infant. He had nothing else he could do. He was kind of like the shepherds. There was nothing really. He couldn't give gold, frankincense, or myrrh. All he had was this little drum, and so he brought the drum. They said, let's go worship the king. He said, I don't have anything to give. They said, well, bring what you have. All he had was a drum. So he brought the drum, and with the approval of Mother Mary, recalling, I played my best for him. So I'm going to ask you for your help today. We're going to walk through this little, this little uh, carol, if you will. And all you have to do is say, pum pum tum We're going to have a little choir practice here, okay? Is that all right with everybody? So everybody say, Pa pum pum, Pa pum pum. There you go. You know the song. You're going to help me out. So we're going to sing through it just a little bit. I'm just trying to make a point here. So it goes, Come, they told me, A newborn king to see. Our finest gifts we bring. To lay before the king. Man, y'all are great. So to honor him. When we come. Then it gets better. Little baby. I am a poor boy too. I have no gift to bring that fits to give a king. Now it gets even better. Shall I play for you? 
Mary nodded. The ox and lamb caught time. I played my best for him. Now comes the crunch. Then he smiled at me. Me and my drum. Heard it all my life and never got the meaning. I'm here to tell you today that it's all about what you have to give. God does not expect gold. He does not expect silver. He does not expect frankincense. He does not expect myrrh. He doesn't expect anything lavish to be brought into this house to worship Him. He simply says, bring what you have. Bring what you have. But God, all I have is a little drum. Bring your drum. I'm here to tell somebody today in this Christmas season, we need to rethink how we give and what we give and why we give. We have a Savior who came to this earth who shed His blood for us so that we could know redemption. And all He's asking is just like those angels. You see, it's different for you and me. He put something different in you and me. He put something in us called a will. Jesus was mindful of the cost of the gifts. In his ministry, he called attention to the publicans and the Pharisees as they dropped their coins in the coffer to make noise. Rattle, rattle, ring, ring. Make sure everybody know they bring it in. You know, it's kind of like the person who, who pays a bill in, in nickels and quarters just so it clanks. Just to put on a show. What did he say about the publicans when they pray? Oh, don't pray with vain repetitions and loud, loud speaking so everybody hears you. I, I'll hear what you say in private, right? He looked over and he saw the little widow with the two mites and he said she gave more than they all, right? It's about how and what and why. The woman at the well, John 4, he said, give me a drink. He knew that she had nothing. He knew who she was. And he knew everything about her life. And when she came to the realization of who she was talking with, it changed everything in her being. Now she lost her mind at that moment. She said, thou art the Christ. You're the Christ. We don't know how to worship. You know, we're trying to worship. And he says, woman, look, if you really understood who's speaking to you right now, you would ask that I would give you something to drink, and it would be from a well of living water that never runs dry. And she asked for it, and he responded to her. She left her water pot. She left everything she had and ran into the streets. Come see this man. She found out what was really important in that moment. It wasn't the water pot and it wasn't her duties and it wasn't her responsibility. It was this, I have to worship the King of Kings because I'm now in His presence. Can I tell you that in this season of the Savior, it's up to us to worship the King of Kings and be in His presence. It's the Mary and Martha complex. You know, Martha, uh, she was in the, in the kitchen doing what she was supposed to do when Jesus came to their house. And, and Mary is out sitting at the feet of Jesus. And she goes out and she says, Master, come on, help me out here. I'm trying to prepare a meal. And she's just sitting there. And he says, Martha, she's found the good part. What is the good part? It's not about the meals and it's not about the stuff and all the perfunctory things we do. It's about being in the presence of Almighty God. It's about being in the presence of the Savior. It's the hows, it's the whys, it's the what. So when we get to Christmas this year, it's very important that we understand why we're here, what we're celebrating, and how we're doing it, and taking time in that moment. Oh, yeah, you're going to give gifts, you're going to exchange presents and all of that, and there's nothing wrong with that, but somewhere in there, there's got to be a moment when you stop down and say, God, I'm so grateful for the gift you gave. I'm so grateful for the gift you gave. So here we are at Christmas season again. Time for the great gift exchange between each and every one of us. He doesn't need our finances. You say, oh, does that mean I don't have to get? No, that's not what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying. He doesn't need our finances. God, can, hey, if God could step out on nothing and say, let there be. And the sun and the moon and the earth is formed. God can do anything. 
just like this building right here. If God decides he can cause to somebody to step up and say, this can happen, that can happen. He doesn't really need our finances. Now, we need to give. That's a part of it. But he doesn't need that. He doesn't need our talent. I used to get frustrated younger. We were talking earlier. I went to University of North Texas for music education, and I was deep into it. I loved music, and I was all about it and everything. And I would get so frustrated because we would practice long and hard, and we would have everything as tight, as good as we could have it. And we would sing our songs. And then, and then I, I remember specifically one man, missionary, old brother, brother uh, Langham, would come to church, and he couldn't hardly walk. He had a bad knee. He'd kind of get up to the platform, and he'd get the microphone, and here we put all this practice time in, did all this stuff, and he had to get up there and say, God is so good to me. And the place would just blow up. Everybody would start crying. And I was thinking, we put all this practice in. He walks up there, can't carry a tune in a bucket. You see, God doesn't necessarily need our talent. What he needs is a pure heart reaching up from your experience. Everybody in this place has a testimony where God brought you from, what he's done in your life, that testimony is what has to come alive in this season. You've got to understand it's Jesus Christ. Come to this earth for your redemption, and your testimony is the greatest gift you have. How? The how we give. When we come into this house, we don't just come in to clap our hands perfunctory. We're just doing our job. No, you've got to understand why we're doing it, how we're doing it, and what we're doing it for. We're doing it to raise up the name of Jesus Christ. To love him and to give back to him, it's a powerful thing. It doesn't need her any physical thing that we have that we can carry to the altar. In this great gift exchange, the only gift he really wants is that which he returned to us at his birth. He wants to give us the gift of a choice. The gift of a choice. Just like the angels, they could have chosen to fall like a third of them did. Today, you have a choice. And the greatest gift you can bring the Lord Jesus Christ today is the gift of you. This is powerful. This is powerful. But if you'll give the Lord the gift of you, this will just become a byproduct of who you are. This right here, reaching out to someone on the job will just be a part of what you do. The greatest thing you'll ever do is give God the gift of you. Stand with me. He wants the gift of your choice. God wrapped up the greatest gift of all time in human flesh and entered the world. He did so without any guarantee. He didn't know whether you would love him or not. He gave us the choice to return the favor of the great gift exchange of us. Isaiah had it right. His name is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel. He's the Holy One, Son of God, Savior of the world. I know you don't know it. That's just the scripture. You'll catch on. His name is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel. He's the Son of God, Holy One, Savior of the world. One more time. His name is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel. He's the Holy One, Son of God, Savior of the world. Can you love Him right now? I love you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, O oh God. I worship you, O oh God. I worship you, O oh God. I thank you for the gift that you brought us. I want to return the favor now. I want to give the gift of myself back to you, O oh God. I love you, Lord Jesus. 
I love you, Lord Jesus. I have nothing else to give. I just bring myself to you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. You opened the service with it today, and I, I just knew at that moment it was the right thing. We're going to finish with this as pastor comes. Oh, come, let us adore him. I just wondered today, and I don't know what you do, what's customary right now with all that's going on, whether you come down or whether you don't, it, it doesn't really matter. Wherever you're standing, if you want to come down, however that works uh, here in Belgium, you do whatever's normal for you. But right now, I'm, I'm imploring you, I'm asking you, could you say this from the depths of your spirit, from the depths of your heart, and give him the greatest gift you can give him this Christmas, and that is simply the gift of your worship. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Oh, Come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord for He. alone is worthy for he alone is worthy he cries the Lord one more time with your hands lifted for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, he cries the Lord. Come on from the back to the front. Oh, let's give him praise right now, Lord. We love you, Jesus. God, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be honored and exalted and glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. As they're going to just prepare singing right there in just a moment. I just, I want to, we, we've, we've heard a word today from the Lord. Amen. And what a beautiful word we have heard. Amen. Let me tell you the greatest thing you can give the Lord. Just as Brother Pedigo said, the greatest gift you could give the Lord is your heart. Amen. It's your life. Amen. It's all of you. Amen. And I, I, I don't know if there's maybe a part that you've held back and kind of reserved. And, you know, sometimes in our lives we can, we can hold some things back. And uh, the very thing that maybe we're tempted to hold back is the very thing the Lord is saying. I want that. Amen. You see, he's a jealous God. The Bible talks about a, a rich young ruler. Doesn't even give him a name. He, he just, the Bible said he was a ruler. He, he had a lot. And he had done a lot. And he came to the Lord and, and said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he touched the very thing that he was reluctant giving up. Amen. And the Lord said, go and do this. And the Bible said that he walked away sorrowfully. He, he held on to that. Amen. God wants all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. There's a song we sing around here. And it's this, Jesus be the center of it all. He wants to be the center, not only of just the Christmas season, but as we're approaching here very soon, the turning over of a calendar leaf into a, a 
new year if the Lord carries. What are you going to do different today that's going to change your new year? Amen. I don't know about you, but there's some things I want to leave behind. And there's some things I want to reach forward to in the new year and grab a hold of. Amen. They're going to sing. And as they're going to sing, here's what I want to invite you to do. Obviously, respecting social distancing. But if you feel comfortable doing it, I, I'd like to invite you to come and, and just gather around here in the altar. I, I realize you're, you're welcome to stay in your seat, but if, if you're willing, amen, just, just come and gather right here. Uh, those that are willing to do it and, and those that obviously you feel more comfortable in this season staying there, I get it. But there's something about taking a step and coming forward Maybe it's just a sign in me. Maybe it's just something that helps me just feel like I'm, I'm taking some progression to the Lord. But I want you to come. And they're, they're just going to sing a few parts of this song. And as they're singing, would you just... I, I want you to talk to the Lord. And, and I want you to give Him your heart. I want you to give Him your spirit. I... I want you to give him your soul. And if there's anything that you've been kind of holding back on God with, why don't consider saying, Lord, I'm giving this to you today. This is my gift to you in this season. Hallelujah. Would you join me in prayer right now? Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord God of heaven, I pray, Almighty God, the anointing of the Lord upon this assembly. God, as we gather in and around this altar, Lord, maybe all we have is our, so to speak, our drum. Maybe we don't have a whole lot. Maybe this year has knocked us down. Maybe 2020, God, has challenged us so deeply. But God, we can bring what we have. We, we, we can bring, as it were, our drum to you and say, Lord, it's not a whole lot. But, but here's my two mites, God. I'm just going to give you what I can give you today. I'm going to surrender my heart, my soul, my spirit, God. Receive me today. Come on, as they just begin to sing, let the Spirit of the Lord touch you right now. Let God minister to you right now. In Jesus' name. This is my Come on, let the Spirit of the Lord minister to you right now. I feel it. I give you. Lord, I give you praise, oh God. All that I adore is in you. Yes, the Lord is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. Come on, I feel it.
Come on, can that be your, your song right now, your words? Would you just say that to the Lord? I give you my heart, my soul. 